I, um, I've always been interested in letters since I was a youth. Uh, I did work out the bubble, the alphabet and bubble letters in full overlapping edge bubble letters when I was in grade school. And I don't know where I saw bubble letters, but I knew I needed to do that in this, in, because I'm of a certain age, I did psychedelic poster art. So I've always loved poster art and pop art, um, you know, even though my degree is in painting, drawing and photography, the supposedly serious, which is just a disgusting word. But, um, and so when I saw graffiti starting to happen in LA in the mid eighties, I was interested in it, but I wasn't a documentary oriented photographer. And so um, I saw it and I liked it, but I didn't do anything about it until I happened by, by happenstance came across this graffiti yard, the Belmont Tunnel Graffiti Yard, just after a major battle between two crews. And I thought, okay, well, there has to be a record for this because it's, it's no pun intended, very fugitive. And it comes and it goes and it's extraordinary. So I started to, I started here and I ran into somebody and they told me about another place and another place until I was getting around the city very well. And you know, there's a whole story about me uh, relative to the graffiti community. And they're originally seeing me around and concluding that I either had to be crazy or a cop because why else would somebody that was as old as their parents want to be doing this? But they, uh, uh, over time, trusted me and welcomed me into the community, and now uh, actually have very um, appreciated that I have pictures of thousands of things that they never documented. And so this particular production is called The Timeline uh, because they knew that uh, the Belmont Tunnel was on its way out, and there's a whole story there about, you know, um, the way the Meta Company of Meta Corporation went about it in a very sleazy way. And, but they thought, let's do a timeline of the people that were here and kind of the era in which they came into the Belmont Graffiti uh, Tunnel Yard, which had a 20 year history from uh, 1984 to 2004. And so these are um, all major players. And it starts with uh, this is Shandu, and um, he does a kind of quasi-cubist thing with, with figurative stuff, but this he's doing with his letters here. And But Kale, who's also a member of K2S crew, um, so he's, the first major crew in L.A. was Labs, Los Angeles Bomb Squad, of which he was a member. And that morphed into K2S, which stands for Kill to Succeed. The kill means kill, the same thing as a comedian. He killed it. He did really well. So they do really well. They kill the wall. Characters by Kale. The next person over here, that's Rick. Rick won. And he was central, along with Prime, who, um, uh, in terms of establishing an L.A. style that was influenced, see, these, these sharp corners and these edges, that's coming from gang block letter and gang calligraphy influence. And these people actually got out of gang life through doing modern graffiti. So there's a whole story there, a relationship there. Then we have Prime. And um, I'm not entirely sure if Prime was actually there for this or if they just wanted him. He might have been away at the time, but they wanted his name there. And then we have, um, oh, this is interesting. This is, says Scribe, uh, S-C-R-I-B-E, um, who's not somebody that I'm as familiar with, but you see the 1984, because that's, they're trying to date things there. Right. Um, and then, um, and then we have here, it goes up to here, and that's Make, who also wrote, who also writes Gallo, or G-A-L-O. And um, and then who, who is this? Hmm. Or, hmm. I'm I'm not getting this one right now, but I'll I'll look okay. at it more later and get back to you. Then we have sketch. And then we have. Hmm. Making me nuts on this one. Uh -huh. It'll come okay. to you maybe yeah. later. Uh, Neo, 
And usually it's N E O, but he just put an extra E there just to take a little more space. And then the next person is Earn, E A R N, and that's um, uh, from um, UCA, your undercover artist crew. Um, and there are a lot of shout outs, by the way, around here. These are, these are people that were important to them. Like the Neo is this piece by Neo, but then Bash, Mondo, uh, Beiser. So he puts, you put your crewmates in there, uh, which is usually different from the signature. And then we have another, after Earn, another Kale character. And uh, then we have Besk. Besk is somebody, um, he, again, you're, you're trying to have your, your own immediately identifiable style. He was also a UCA member. And then we have somebody who's really one of my favorite people, Sinner. And you can actually, there's the S, there's the I, there's the N, the E, and the R. But he wanted, in the crew, LTS, Last to Serve, Last to Survive, they, they have a crew style. They really wanted it to make it look like you knew they were using spray paint. So they wanted the strokes to show. They wanted it to be loose and um, spray painterly. Right. Think. Then we have Panic. And this is only half of it. The other yeah, half of it will appear there. And, and yeah. that was... Yeah. Panic is just extraordinary. And he's a member of like six crews. He, unfortunately, he was... His family came over here from Chile illegally, and they never got their papers straight. And he got caught up some years ago in a in, in some kind of suite. And even though he had this wonderful family, this wife and two great kids, and he was a very loving stay-at-home father at the time, he got deported back to Chile. And that's just you know it was just it, 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 insane and crazy and unfortunate. But here's the rest of Panic's piece. Really extraordinary um, can control. All everything you see here is freehand spray can. Wow! And so these clean, these clean edges. That's can control. Wow! His his sharpness is extraordinary, and his his fill, the forms inside the letters are extraordinary. One of his closest friends is Acme, um, also from SH, which is Sky High or Seeking Heaven crew along with LOD, which is Lokes on Dope, and um, uh, other, uh, those are two of the main crews. So this is Acme. And then you have Bash. Well, he's writing Basher here because if you have more space, you verbize your name from Bash to Basher, and that's one of his characters, and he also was really good with characters. Cab, um, who always wanted to stay with a really kind of just straight ahead basic style as opposed to something that was more abstracted and fractured. And he's a, a major presence, that was a major presence. Then Unit, um, who for many years did the uh, 50 millimeter uh, Los Angeles website that documented and had an archive of Los Angeles graffiti and it finally kind of went under because of the digital age and uh, Instagram. Um, and then um, Zuko, who is um, K4P, there are like four or five, at least five crews in LA that are quote unquote kill crews. So they have kill in the name, but again, kill means to do something really well. And kill for pride. When I first heard that name, I thought, oh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard until I found out. No, they meant like do something really well for pride. Right, or the, right. the, the pride, the group, the group. Then we have Spurn, and that's um, PDB crew, or Please Don't Buff. In other words, please don't cover this up. Uh, uh. They, they buff, because you know, originally buff meant when they buffed the trains with the big rollers and the spray in New York, but buff became a graffiti term for covering up graffiti by the, the authorities. And Spurn has a really distinctive, um, the PDB has a distinctive style. And then we come into the... So this this lower bit here is that part of no it? okay no that's just that was... because that's that's uh just happened to be down there and so that's not really part of the timeline okay and so somebody was actually probably just painting over it yeah, then uh no they happened to be there probably when yeah. these people then went up okay it just it was kind of happenstance okay um and then we have the uh, kind of an extraordinary new generation 
um, of AWR, or Artwork Rebels, and MSK, um, Mad Society Kings. We have Sabre, who has an extremely fractured uh, style, very virtuoso stuff. And then Revoke, and Revoke, again, is a kind of a top tier. All these guys are very top tier, highly respected around the world uh, writers. Oh, wow. um, and Revoke has a, and Sabre too, to a lesser degree, but Revoke has a very strong gallery presence and actually had a one-man show at the Detroit Museum of Art, which just came down a little while ago. Wow. He actually does work that you would have no idea has anything to do with his graffiti background unless you knew about him, but it's very thoughtful, very uh, conceptually sophisticated as well as interestingly visual work. And then we have Retina, who... Is that the Retina, the he, contemporary artist Retina here the in LA now? Yes, Retina, the contemporary artist and and um, least sober person in the entire group yeah. of crowd that, yeah. that we're, you know... An angry man. A lot of people are concerned that he's going to be, you know, the graffiti world's Seymour Philip Hoffman, uh, or Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, but he, um, I, I like his graffiti style much better than his gallery work, and that and that ended the uh, yeah. timeline. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Steve. Sure.